amazing things start to happen. But only if we truly made Jesus our Lord. Not just saying Jesus is Lord, but truly turning our lives into living in a way that shows that Jesus is Lord, is the Lord of our lives. I have a quote for you from Carl Frederick Buckner. Listen to your life. Listen to what happens to you because it is through what happens to you that God speaks. It's in language that's not always easy to decipher, but it's there powerfully, memorably, unforgettably. Let's start this morning with Ezekiel. The passage is called Valley of the Dry Bones. It's a favorite passage. We have many songs about this passage as well because it brings hope. We know that traditionally this was a very important passage and remains a very important passage in the Jewish tradition because of where it is placed in their liturgical calendar. It is something for us to pay attention to. I want to read to you from a commentary. This is the third of Ezekiel's four visionary reports. So if you've read the whole book of Ezekiel, you will understand and probably bring to mind some of the other visions that he had. Here, as in the other three vi vision accounts, Ezekiel states, the hand of the Lord came upon me, transported by the spirit of the Lord to the valley. Ezekiel is astonished to see that it is fulfilled with a multitude of disconnected and thoroughly dis disassociated bones. The image of a battlefield whose slain never received proper burial, but were left to decay and be ravaged by birds and beasts where they fell. Having led Ezekiel around these piles of bones, Yahweh asked him a question, mortal, can these bones live? Yahweh then orders Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones as if they had ears to hear. In response to the prophet's words, the bones are remembered, remembered, bound by sinews, refleshed, covered with skins, and animated by the spirit. The vision is followed by a salvation oracle. Yahweh informs Ezekiel the whole house of Israel the exiles are lamenting that their bones are dried up. Their hopes have perished and they feel totally and utterly cut off. Yahweh instructs the prophet to inform his audience that their present situation and consequent despair will be transformed. God will open their graves, bring them forth from those graves and return them to their homeland. The recognition comes with, and you shall know that I am God, you shall know that I am Yahweh. It points to God's greater purpose in all this activity, that Israel shall know and acknowledge who the true deity is in their lives. In all of God's power and sovereignty, God's promises shine through. God's words will always be fulfilled. So whether you call Ezekiel's experience a dream, a spiritual encounter, a vision, or a story, the metaphor remains the same. Ezekiel encountered the physical manifestation of what happens when people lose hope because they have put their trust in something other than the God of Abraham and Sarah. It's more than just a physical death. It's a death without proper goodbyes, without burial. It is a brutal and painful death. Life without hope is excruciating. It is easy for us to think that we can't be in this position because we come here and we openly worship God and we try to keep our hearts aligned, but yet we deal every day, seven days a week, with the world coming at us, trying to pull us away from this alignment with God. It is easy for people to be pulled away especially when the messages that we are hearing over and over are pulling us away from God and we have but this small moment on a Sunday morning where we can relax and not have to deal with that. Whether it be that the results bring us to a place of tears and anger because we want our God to be represented or whether it be this place brings us to questions 
that draw us closer to God. Those moments are part where the Holy Spirit is continuing to bring us in. Unfortunately, there are often times when the pull distracts us from God. Icons, things from our country, people, cars, money, prestige, whatever it may be, we have over and over, we are told and have opportunities to turn our eyes from God and become more a part of the world, pulling away from the one who gives us hope. When Ezekiel witnessed the result of this kind of death, the spirit asked if the bones could be brought to life, and Ezekiel basically says, I don't know. God then responds with the knowledge for Ezekiel that God has not given up on the Israelite nation. Yahweh is there for them and indeed wants Ezekiel to speak these words of hope, to remind them of their salvation and the covenant with God and bring these dry bones without hope back to life, to ask God to be their God again. God keeps God's promises. God brought the bones back to life in the reverse order of how they died. Words of hope and love. The message of God's remaining faithfulness to them brought them back. For us, we live in the knowledge of what Jesus came and did for us. That is our place where we can find our hope again. Understanding that Christ's love was so valuable. Christ's example, the example that we are to follow. Christ giving up all that Jesus had in this world, slowly giving up, replacing where he came from, what he was born with, family connections, connection to nation. Jesus gave it all up in showing us that we are to connect with God. Jesus's rules, Jesus's commandments were that we are to love God most. Anything that we allow to come between us and God is a sin or an idol pulling us away. God's promises coming to us always, but us often turning from them and choosing something else instead. And what I'm talking about very, very directly is what I said in the beginning. We can come here for our entire lives and say that Jesus is Lord, but what we're talking about is making Jesus Lord of our lives, making Jesus that center of who we are and not allowing anything to come between us. Some of the examples or some of the, um, some of the things that appear when we are struggling with this in our lives are different attitudes that come forth. Anger when our object of affection is taken away often an irritability, that joy, that peace that we have with God isn't present because we have turned our attention onto something else. It can be that we act out in ways like trying to pull others and get them to understand and align with the same thing that we have become aligned with, rather than encouraging people to see God and align their hearts again with Christ. It is neglecting things like reading our Bible and spending time in prayer. It's neglecting to listen to the Holy Spirit when the Spirit is speaking to us. There is that peace of the Spirit where when we are doing something that is not in alignment with God, we are moving into areas of sin, where the Spirit will hit us with that knowledge and understanding that we need to put something back in place. We need to move back with Christ. And when we ignore that constantly, the spirit, Spirit's influence feels like it's faded away or we're doing okay, but the truth is, is that we've shut that off. We aren't listening anymore. And so we don't recognize or hear the Spirit in our lives. When we move to the New Testament, we see what the Jesus followers have been doing so that they are prepared and open and ready for the coming of the Holy Spirit that day. They have, as you know, been following Jesus for a couple years. They have been learning and growing. Jesus even taught them what we call the Lord's Prayer. That was Jesus's example of how to pray. 
So they started at the beginning and they have been working for the past years to bring Jesus into their life, to understand more of this story. And then when Jesus is gone, they don't stop at that. They continue. They continue praying, they continue their time together, learning more and seeking to understand where God is leading them. What happens in that moment when they're all together, not because they have to be together, but because they chose to be together, is what we call Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit in a very profound and real way. They begin speaking different languages. They are given the call to go out into the world and teach everyone about Christ. They're given the call because they have their own true love and focus on Yahweh and nothing is going to take that away. And so God sends them to teach the world about God. On that day, they are amazed with the spiritual gifts they are given and the people around them think that they must be drunk because how can they suddenly be acting like this? But they know the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit is within them and it has changed who they are completely. There is nothing left in their lives that they want to use to turn away from God. Rather, all that they are is focused on God. And so we have this beautiful gift, this beautiful reminder each year of how powerful the Holy Spirit can be in our lives. How much of a difference the Holy Spirit can make when we recognize and acknowledge the Spirit's presence. Friends, we have the ability to have that same Holy Spirit with us. Our biggest struggle is comes from ourselves, from being in the world instead of understanding that we are not called to be in the world, but rather we are called to be in God's kingdom and we are placed here to make a difference. We have the ability to leave behind to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to move forward with our lives focused on Christ. We have the ability to spend time each day. I mean, it is so much easier now even than it was back then. We have our hand Bibles that we can hold. We also have the internet where we can look up Bible verses any time of the day when something pops in our mind. We can look up resources for prayers. We can look up words of encouragement. We have the ability to spend our days focused on Christ, allowing our minds to remain in that place with Christ. I urge you to consider where your treasure is. I know it can feel like we all have a lot of days on this earth, but it is but a moment. Going so fastly, so quickly, that each moment matters. Each moment counts, and each moment needs to be spent with the God of Abraham and Sarah as our true God, allowing nothing else in this world to come between us and God. Our way home is with Jesus, and that is where our hope comes from, friends. That is where our hope is on the bleakest of days, is knowing that Jesus is right there with us always, always loving us and caring for us and waiting for the right time to take us home. So please, let us pray together and let go of the things that is pulling us away from God. Dear Jesus, we have been in church our entire lives and yet we struggle to make you our Lord. Please forgive us for bringing things into our lives and choosing other gods. Forgive us for pretending to be your people when we are actually belonging to this world. Convict us again, bring our hearts again in alignment with you. Call us to your love and remind us of the hope that only you can bring. Keep us this day in your presence and allow your Holy Spirit to guide our paths. We pray this not out of anger for letting go of idols, but out of a true desire to live again fully, holy, and humbly with you, Jesus, as our Savior and our God. Amen.
Amen. Please stand as we sing together every time I feel the Spirit. <laughs> 